10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Growing Boulder, what's next? Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Schaefer, and welcome to another edition of Growing Boulders. What's next? And this one, this one's going to be a special edition. We're going to do something a little bit different because we've tried something in the past couple of weeks, had a tremendous reaction to it, and we thought we would like to share it with you if you haven't seen it. And if you have, we kind of directed you to come here because you're about to meet somebody who's very interesting and fascinating. Now, so what did you guys do? Well, we granted access, thanks to a very special filmmaker, to a documentary film. I know you're all going, why is that a big deal? This was really interesting and it was really exciting. Think about life, think about our society today, everything that's going on in the news. What happened to the common threads, the things that bind us all together? There's so many fewer of them, or at least it seems that way, than there ever used to be. But growing bolder is all about bringing people together. We all share a desire to age well, to, to live lives of intent and purpose, to, 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 to make everything, every day as fun, as interesting, as curious as we can. It's one thing that we do share, a hope for that. But society kind of has this thing where, oh no, once you start getting older, you start slowing down. You don't do as much. People don't talk to you as much. You really don't have as many friends. We don't invite you to as many things, but that is beginning to change. And it's because of people like you that come to this program every week and follow Growing Boulder. Well, we have a segment on our website at growingbolder.com called Growing Boulder Events. And when the pandemic is gone, it's going to be all sorts of live events taking place everywhere where we can all get together, socialize, meet each other, and share our stories. But during the pandemic, we've done a very interesting thing with Growing Boulder Events. We've reached out to guests from all over the country and even beyond to bring their philosophies, their points of view, their tips, their ideas to Growing Boulder to share with you on ways that we can all have lives well lived. So one of our good friends is documentary filmmaker and she's going to be on our program in just a minute. Her name is Sky Bergman. She's created this documentary, as I said, called Lives Well Lived. And really, isn't that what we all wanna do? We all think of ourselves as wanting to get the most out of our lives. Nobody wants to end up frail or elderly we all want to go 100 miles an hour for as long as we can, for as far as we can. And that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be joined by the creator of that film, as I said, Sky Bergman, to figure out why this documentary that she has created is lighting such a spark out there. So it's called Lives Well Lived, celebrating the secrets, wit, and wisdom of aging. And we want to give you a little taste of what it's about. And then we'll bring Sky in and talk a little bit about your future my future and what we need to realize about aging in our society today. So here's the trailer from the documentary film, Lives Well Lived. My definition of a life well lived. That's a really interesting question. I mean, I just lived my life one day at a time and I did everything the way I thought I should do it. And I don't know what brought me this far. Only God knows. Maybe I still have something to do. Life plays with you, doesn't it? You have to take it. And you have to battle it. We all had to wear these around our necks from Vienna. And I was standing there trying to be very brave. We were taken out of our homes. We had to leave everything. And we could only take what we could carry. The whole civil rights movement was a big thing for me. I would be on the picket lines all the time. An Indian chief once said, you will be remembered by the tracks you leave behind. The reason we had nine kids is that I had an oversexed Italian wife who couldn't keep her hands off me. And since I never get headaches, I couldn't say no. <laughs> My wife passed away in 21 years ago. 
I am still married and always will be married. My friends, they said, oh, I'm getting too old. I can't do this. I can't do that. And I said, oh, fool you with that. If you say, I can't do it, then you won't be able to do it. Just go out and do it. It's not your numerical age, it's your biological age. So think young, act young, feel young, forget the number. Which is your good side? I don't have a good side. They're all bad sides. It's great, isn't it? It grabs you, it pulls you in. Here's who made it. Here's the person that made the film, Sky Bergman. Welcome to Growing Boulders. What's next? How are you? I am great. Thank you, Bill, for having me. And thank you to Growing Boulder for putting this all together and allowing us to do a special uh, Thanksgiving weekend screening. It was really wonderful. You know, it, it's we have decided early on that uh, to, that we're all in this together. Um, and, and that's that's like the overriding message of Growing Boulder and also of what you've done with Lives Well Lived. These are people that none of us know. And in just in that clip alone, you, we're all interested in, 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 in those people. Who are they? What were the stories they told? So, so stop for a minute and tell us a little bit about how did you come to make a documentary about older people? <laughs> well, that's a really good question, Bill. So I... I um, should say that my grandmother is my role model and inspiration. And when she was 99, she was still working out at the gym. And um, I thought I'd better film her because nobody's going to believe that at 99, she's still working out at the gym. And I asked her for a few words of wisdom. And that was the beginning of this whole project. I'd never done a video project before this, except for videoing my grandmother cooking. And um, I just thought, wow, I wanna find other people out there that are as much an inspiration as my grandmother is to me. And so I sent an email blast out to all my friends, family, and all the alum that I've taught over the years that I've been at Cal Poly here in San Luis Obispo, California. And, and just said, if you, here's this video clip of my grandmother at the gym. And if you have somebody like her in your life, please nominate them. And the heartwarming thing was I was just inundated by amazing, um, wonderful nominations. So it really, it just kind of took on a life of its own. Isn't it funny, Sky? One of the most common questions we get is, man, how do you find those amazing people <laughs> for the stories that you guys do? And we have to tell them that's like the easiest part of all because the truth is everybody has a story. We're all fascinated by the human life, the journey that anybody goes on. Individuals don't always realize that, but everybody does have a story and we all benefit from hearing people's stories. Absolutely, I mean, I always say the same thing that you do, that everybody has an amazing story to tell if you just take the time to listen. I think that we are so often um, on our devices and not looking at each other and not taking that time to talk to each other. And I had this gift of taking four years to really interview these 40 people and, uh, and just put away all the devices and really just connect. And it was such a wonderful gift. And my life has been forever changed as a result of that. And so have the lives of a lot of people who've seen it. And, and here's, here's a huge point that comes across in what you've done and who you are. You weren't Ken Burns when you started this. It, <laughs> no. You didn't have a string of like successful documentaries and looking for, well, where's my next big challenge? What you proved, Sky, is that all of us are capable of asking the same questions of our own family members, our neighbors, the, the people in our lives who maybe we see every day and we know nothing about. Absolutely. And I, I will say that I, I took about six months to kind of come up with the questions that I was going to ask, because I think the most difficult thing when you're interviewing somebody is where do you start? How do you make that interview happen? And so I have the luxury of teaching at a university and I um, took a number of people out to lunch, like social scientists and people that taught the psychology of aging class. And I said, if you weren't going to embark on something like this, what are some of the questions that you might want to ask? And those are all on my website. So anyone that is thinking, oh, I really want to interview my mother, my father, my grandparents, and don't know where to start, please go to the website and you can download all those questions and use that as a starting point. Because I think that's the hardest thing is to 
um, just sit somebody down and say, well, tell me about yourself. And that's way too wide open ended. I think that having some more pointed questions uh, really helps to get that dialogue going and to get that conversation started. And, and then once it starts, it's hard to stop it sometimes. So it's, a, but you need some place to start. And that's a fantastic point too, but I don't want people to think that it was an academic kind of an effort for you. This no. all started, as you mentioned, because of your grandmother and your relationship, which really in today's family, a lot of kids are missing out on relationships with their grandparents. Your grandmother, uh, some of the video that we have here, she was going to the gym. Look at look at you guys. You guys look so happy together. But, but you, you, you realized <laughs> there was something a, a I, little uh, out of the ordinary. I got back from my vacation. I'm glad to get back into my regular routine, which is to come to exercise at least twice a week. I want you to know that I'm 99 years old. My husband always said, Evelyn, I don't care about anything, but don't get fat. And so here I am doing exercise to stay in shape. Some words of wisdom from an old lady. Be kind to everyone. Enjoy life to the limits. I'm grateful for all I have and the love of God and my family. That's it now. Arrivederci. Ciao. You know, we feel an instant connection to her, Sky, and it's not that she's different than almost anybody else's grandma, but we don't often give them a chance to speak, to be heard. And your grandmother was going to the gym when she was 100 years old? Absolutely. Well, and, and I should say that also, uh, she did not start going to the gym until she was 80. So it's never too late to start going to the gym or to start something new for that matter. And I think um, I also I always tell my students that the more personal a project, the more universal it becomes. And this project, as you said, really was an absolutely very personal project. Um, because of a love of my grandmother. And I think because of that, the people that I interviewed in the film or for the film really were much more open than they probably would have been otherwise because they could see that love that I had of my grandmother and that there was no ulterior motive other than that I wanted to collect these incredible stories because of my grandmother and because of the, the wisdom that I learned from her. And um, you know, one of the things that I learned when I was doing the research for the film, and I've said this a number of times, is that the last hundred years is the first time that we've looked to anyone other than our elders for advice. And I really feel the world is suffering as a result. And in some ways, I kind of took for granted as I was growing up that I had my grandparents close at hand and that they were still alive. I mean, I even had my great grandmother who was alive until I was 19 and she was 97, I think, when she passed away. And, and um, so I grew up with that wisdom. I grew up with my elders. But there are many, um, many people that don't have that. And I think that that connection is so vitally important. There's a, a very different relationship that you have with, an, with your grandparents than what you have with your parents or just with an elder. I mean, think about all the questions that I would ask my grandmother and all the advice that I would talk to her and, and ask her about and, and the, the lessons that she had because she'd lived through so many things. And, and in one sense, I think the film right now, one of the reasons that it's resonating so much with people is because they can look at these stories that, of these people and all the things that they went through and their resilience. And right now we're all going through this together at the same time. And um, so I think it's really, we need to hear those stories of resilience to help us get through these moments. And I just have to, I see that you have the, my photo of, I know we're not supposed to have favorites, but Lucky Louie was one of my favorite, favorite people that I met from doing this film. Um, he um, is still making mozzarellas at 97. I just saw him yesterday outside his door with a mask on, um, but he is just an amazing human being. And I think he says it best when his quote that I love from the film is, happiness is a state of mind. You can be happy with what you have or miserable with what you don't have. You decide. And there are often so many days when I, I think about that and I it really does change my attitude about things. I look at the things that I have and I decide to be grateful for those instead of um, upset for the things that I don't have. And especially right now, I think that's a really good lesson to, to be reminded of. Luz, the guy who makes the mozi cheese. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> And he still does that? He still does that at 97 years old. He still does that. He said to me the other day that um, he he now he wants to, he's lived this long, he wants to make it to 100. So I'm sure he will because he, he's, uh, 
he's just an amazing guy. He he makes some mozzarella for his daughter's deli, which during this pandemic is actually busier than ever. And so there's, I, I think that people uh, really gravitate towards him because he's just, he's such a nice guy and he's got so many, I, I call them Louisms. There's so many amazing things that he says. Um, like one thing that didn't end up in the movie that he says about his wife and his incredible marriage is that they were always pulling the wagon in the same direction. And I just think that's such a lovely way to think about um, being in a relationship. So I, I just kind of let all of his Louisms sink in. <laughs> it's just great. <laughs> you know, in just the short clip that, that we aired here here on this program, you could see, you know, Lou caught my eye too, because on, on one hand, he had that hilarious line about how, well, I happen to have been married to an oversexed wife and I never <laughs> had a headache. And then he, he quickly comes in and talks about that she's been gone for a long time. I, I, I think it seemed that in your film, there wasn't anybody who hadn't gone through a difficulty, a challenge, a heartbreak, had something traumatic to have to deal with and get over. And we always think that that pain is a, is such a negative, and and whenever things don't go our way, that's so bad. But it almost seems like out of pain, something something new is born. Absolutely, I think that that's so uh, important to remember. That you know, one of the people in the film said that failure is a good teacher, and I I think of that often too. And I think of you know, uh, all these things that these people went through. But then I think the lesson is, how did they get through those things? And how did they sustain uh, their positive outlook and their positive attitude? And I have to say that uh, Marion Wolf is one of the people, she came over on the very first kinder transport from Vienna, Austria. And when I was reworking the film, I, I thought of her because I went through and re-edited the film and there were three things that I was really looking for in everyone's story. One was this poignant moment as you talk about, because we all have something like that in our lives. Everyone I think has that. And then the second was a word of wisdom. Um, but then the third was also a moment of humor because I think that as Marion says, we really need humor to get through those tough times. And we need that little bit of levity and it's okay to have that even in the midst of crisis it's okay to have a little bit of levity and some humor so that we can we can all get through that laughter is sometimes the best um healer sky your message and i don't know if you even thought about okay so you make a documentary or an independent film and you kind of wonder where's it going to go you know who's going to see it so you gave us the opportunity to post it on growingbolder.com, people were able to uh, get a link to view it uh, free of charge anytime they wanted to over the Thanksgiving week. And folks, by the way, there's a chance for you to still see it. We'll tell you all about that in a minute. But I just wanted to point out here that here alone this morning, Hugh McLeod is here from Halifax, Nova Scotia. And I'm looking at this on, on our Facebook page right now. Patricia Bishop is, is, is here as well from, I believe, she wrote it here somewhere. I think it was Texas. Debbie Summer is in San Francisco. Uh, Sandra Bright in Murrieta, Georgia, uh, California. Um, there are people watching you right now from all over the country because we don't get to hear this message very often. We don't hear the, the you know, and it's not, sh you, you didn't sugarcoat anything. That, maybe that's the point I wanted to make about Lou. These are people that, yeah, they've had tough things happen to them, but they're, they're here, they're passionate. They seem to have purpose. They feel like they're important. They're, they're living joy at, at a time when conventional wisdom tells us, no, you sit in the rocking chair and you watch Matlock until it's time to go. Did, did it surprise you, the reaction that you're getting from this film? Oh, it, it totally blew me away. I mean, I have to say that um, when I first started thinking about doing this, I wasn't thinking of it as a film. I was really thinking of it as little maybe small clips and, and a web series. And um, it, when I interviewed Marion Wolf, who as I mentioned came over on the first Kinder Transport and she had a cardboard number that she had worn around her neck that she still had from the time she was eight years old. I realized that I really needed to make this into a feature length film. Now, as Phil said, this is my first film. So why I thought I could do that, I don't know. But I think when you're passionate about something, you make it happen. And, and I didn't put any stumbling blocks or roadblocks in the way. I just said, I have to do this and I'm going to figure out how to do it. And, um, you know, their, their stories compelled me to keep going. And I really, I thank my grandmother every day. She passed away, I think about three or four years ago now. I, there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about her. 
but um, she gave me the gift of meeting 40, having 40 new grandparents because all the people in the film have become my grandparents in one way or another. I keep in touch with all of them and um, I have these great relationships and that's such a gift that we don't often have that connection to elders that maybe aren't even related to us. And one of my passions really since doing the film, I mean, I've been, become a filmmaker, but now I'm like an advocate as well for aging and for connecting um, generations. And so I've been working on a number of projects with high schools and colleges around the country where we use the film as a catalyst to connect generations, where we have elders and students that watch the film. And then they use those questions that I came up with for the film um, to interview each other. And then we have a big uh, party at the very end, a rap party where they get to share stories. And we're still doing that even in this virtual world. I think more than ever, the people that are affected by loneliness right now the most are the younger people that are students in high school and colleges and elders. And so we're bringing them together and doing these intergenerational projects that have been super successful because um, the wisdom gained is really amazing. And I also feel that I'm combating ageism one story and one connection at a time. Because when you know somebody in that other group uh, it is harder to say, oh, I don't like that whole group of people. Now you have a friend who is maybe an elder or an elder has a friend that's in their 20s who they, they say, oh, the younger generation, they don't know anything. Well, now they know that that's not true and they find that there's many more commonalities than differences and that's just such a gift. So the film just keeps on giving in so many ways that I hadn't expected. Isn't it isn't it frustrating that still here in 2020, and I should just say the 2020s because who knows about 2020, yeah. we kind of have to make that point. I mean, it's like if we're lucky, we're all going to become older. Do you want to be isolated? Do you want people to look at you thinking your life isn't worth as much as a younger person's life just because of your age? Do you want people to overlook your wisdom and not ask you anything, not want to, to learn from what you've been through. Why, Sky, does it take a, a documentary film or hearing you talk or coming to Growing Bolder for people to realize the benefit isn't from giving them something to do. It makes us change our outlook on who we are, how we relate to everyone in our lives and where we're headed. You know, I, I, I don't know why it takes something like that. It's kind of a shame that it takes something like that, but at least it's happening. And, you know, I feel very grateful that there are a number of um, teachers across the country that see the value in doing something like this and um, educating their students and wanting to connect the generations. Because I think the more that that happens, like anything else, the better it will become. And um, the more value that people that are, are older will become in our society. I mean, in so many other societies, age is you know revered rather than in, I think in our country, we tend to put people in boxes and you know, in, in big uh, box institutions and, and forget about them. And I guess in one sense, I was very lucky because I, I grew up with all of my grandparents and I had them around me. So I never, and their friends. And so that was never even part of my consciousness at all. You know, everybody that was an elder, you should listen to them because they knew what they were talking about and they had these great stories. And so, um, you know, if I can share that joy of collecting those stories and making those connections with other people, then that's amazing. And if the film is the thing that gets it out there and makes that happen, that's terrific. More people are stopping in Sky uh, right now to, to say hello to us here. Jane Elke from Brooklyn, New York, and, and uh, somebody from Colorado as well, uh, Kim Ainsworth. And, and everybody is, you know, it doesn't take much to light the spark of inspiration between our any generation and an older generation. I mean, it's just a natural thing. It's just there isn't that much opportunity in the way society is. But once it happens, like you said, it's a, it's a spark that turns into a flame very quickly. So we're getting a lot of people, Sky. They're going, okay, <laughs> I saw the trailer. I watched her, her grandmother working out. I saw Lou <laughs> making his mozi. Where can I see this film? Now, it was available through Growing Boulder, thanks to you, uh, over Thanksgiving weekend. But I understand that we're extending that now, especially for everybody watching us now, through the weekend as well. Is that right? That is correct. Um, so it's going to be extended through the weekend. 
Um, we are selling DVDs on our website. And so if you're thinking, is there somebody that I can inspire that I, I want to give a film to, um, the DVDs are on our website and um, it's going to be on PBS in May of 2021. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunities to be able to see the film and, and to share it with other people. And uh, uh, your association with GrowingBolder.com, I think, is a great one as well. We we were able to meet you uh, right as the film was was first coming out, and um, uh, the the reaction that we got was tremendous too. We uh, we also did a story that that uh, you can watch now on GrowingBolder.com, which is longer, a little few more insights from Sky and a few more clips uh, from the film. What do, what do you think, Sky? I mean, you've given us a million of them. What do you think was the the biggest takeaway? From, from spending the time with this film and with these people? Uh, is, it, is it that the rest of us are really missing out? Is it that we need to connect with our own families more? What, what was it that, that really hits home for you? Well, I think the thing that really hit home for me was the, the, the things that I think were the commonalities between the people that were in the film that I interviewed. That, and, and again, I was looking for people that were positive and um, were, you know, living what I thought was a full life, whether they were had um, physical ailments or not. It was the three things that were really the commonalities was that one, they all had felt like they wanted to give back in some way and they wanted to feel a sense of purpose. I think that's the most important thing is that a lot of times we think we're gonna retire and that's the golden years, but nobody has really planned for that. And what is our sense of purpose gonna be? So that was vitally important. And then second is having a good um, network of friends or family. And I mean, for example, even in this crazy COVID time, uh, it was Marion's 90th birthday, Marion Wolf, who's in the film, her husband, Paul, who's also 90, figured out a way to do a virtual birthday party for her on Zoom. So, you know, doing those kind of things, I think is really important and staying connected, even during this time. And then I think the third thing is that they all saw life as the glass is half full rather than half empty. So that very positive outlook, as Effie Justison says in, in the film, um, you know, there are many times like right now, none of us can control the fact that we're in the midst of a pandemic, but we can control our attitude about how we are looking at that and, and living through that. And so that's the one thing that we can control. And I think in, in the case of these people in the film, that was something that was really evident. And then for me personally, I think the, the best piece of advice that I got out of the film came from um, Blanche Brown, who was really um, to live in, the, live in the moment. And that um, I think I probably, when we're younger, we're not doing that. We're raising our families. We're trying to get ahead in our job and do all those things. And really I've learned to more live in the moment, especially during this time. And then of course, I think of my grandmother whose words of wisdom ran through my entire life from the time I was a kid, which was, it's just always a good practice to be kind. And if we were all a little bit kinder to each other, what a better world this would be. And especially right now where we could all use a little bit of kindness, whether it's a kind word or leaving groceries on the doorstep of somebody that you know maybe lost their job anonymously or um, just, you know, just there's so many little things that we can do to be kind to each other. And we would really be in so much better shape if we all just did one random act of kindness every day. Wow, it's all three, all great points, Guy. I don't know if you've had a chance while we're talking to look at the comments that that are coming along the side, but the, you, you've got quite a you've got a great group of people that are following <laughs> you here. Uh, even more people che checking in. Uh, Raymond Ward is here from Fairfield, Iowa, and here's one. Kate Kate Pierce is in Cape Town, South Africa. She's wow. 76 years young. Uh, there was somebody else who said that your story has inspired her to make a film on. Uh, people in her family as well, which is amazing. That That's really, what, what a gift to give to, to future generations. And also on, on those comments, you'll see Growing Boulder uh, links to things we've been talking about today, to how to sign up to see the film uh, before the weekend is over, or how to see some of these stories, or how to find Sky's DVDs, which would make an incredible present. And the, <laughs> the thing I love the most about what you've done, Sky, is people always think, well, it's a if it's a film about older people, then it's for older people. But I know that you've had people of all ages that just boom. I mean, you just zone in and, and, and it changes you no matter what age you are. Yeah, and I think that's a surprising thing, especially for younger people. They watch it and they think, oh my God, I didn't realize I was going to enjoy it so much. And I think that's in part because it's one thing to read about somebody's story. It's another thing to actually see the footage and see them at that moment and see them like 
uh, at their age. Like there's one person, Emmy Cleves, who talks about her mother um, got on a train and this is in Riga, Latvia, and the train took off without her and she, she was left on the train platform by herself at the age of 16. And I connect with that because I think, what was I doing at 16? How would I have reacted to that? And so I think that um, the film in a way is successful because of that, because you can see yourself in those situations or you can see somebody that you knew. And I really made an, an effort to uh, interview people that were everyday people. It wasn't somebody that had a famous name. It was everyday people. So it could be your aunt, your uncle, your grandmother, your grandfather. They're really all everyday people. Here at Growing Boulder Sky, we call them extraordinary, ordinary people living extraordinary lives because it's, it is absolutely what we can all do in our lifetimes to make sure that ours are also lives well lived. What a thing to be able to say, you know, as we near the end that, yeah, you know, I got out of it what I wanted to. Uh, and, and what a great uh, group of people. Thank you for watching us this morning. Melissa Davey is here from Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. <laughs> uh, Thea Daniels from Santa Rosa, California. And um, let's see, who was it that, that, again, it's somebody else said that they're inspired now to make a film about their family as well. How fantastic would it be to put a bunch of those films together and release those as a documentary too? You know, Sky, one thing that we always do on uh, Growing Boulders, What's Next? is you know we'll wrap up the interview with the guest and then we'll go to a, a meme of some kind because the growing boulder memes uh, they really connect they're shared everywhere and they do so well and i thought you've had so many great things i've heard you say that would make a perfect meme so instead of putting you on the spot and asking you what would yours be for this program i'm going to pull one out that that you gave us right off the top of the program here when you said this is great Everybody has a story to tell if you take the time to listen. So simple and so powerful and so true. If that's all we get out of this interview, then we've gotten so much and we will be different. We will be better. We'll be closer with our families, our communities, our societies, and it will be the beginning of rebuilding our lives in a totally different way. Sky, are, are, are you, let me ask you one thing. This program's called What's Next? What are you doing next? Well, um, I've been teaching online on Zoom, and that's been interesting and a different kind of challenge. But um, I will probably be retiring at the end of this year and going into filmmaking full time. And I've got two short films that were part of inspired by the people on Lives Well Lived. And my next uh, feature film will probably be all about love, because one of the things that I really enjoyed about the Lives Well Lived film was when people talked about how they first met whether it was five years ago or 50 years ago, they still had that twinkle in their eye. And then the other feature film, I did a short film about um, the art of Mochisuki based on Susie Edo Bauman, who's in my film. Her family usually gets together the week between Christmas and New Year's to make mochi. And it's about 150 people. And I love that sharing of stories through food and through that, um, those ideas that come forth when people are making these wonderful dishes that are part of their family tradition. And that's what I did with my grandmother. So another uh, idea for a feature is to do a lot of different traditions through families and through food. So those are the two things that are cooking for me. How do we follow you, Sky? Because you sound like somebody we definitely want to keep an eye on. <laughs> well, if you go to Lives Well Lived, there's a place that you can sign up for our, our email newsletter list. And um, we'd, I'd be very happy to send you information about what's happening and what's going on with, I, with all these different productions. <laughs> I, th I think today you've made a number of new fans because really, okay. you, 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 so you, you, know, you, took, you stepped out of your comfort zone a little bit, but mostly because of your grandmother to try to do, I'm sure, a solid to give a little exposure to some older people and they ended up changing your life in ways you never ever could have imagined and that I, I hope that's the bottom line message for all of us sky thank you for getting <laughs> up early in california and, and being with us this was fantastic this was inspiring and a great reminder especially now is you know this is the strangest holiday season we've ever had uh, my parents are 94 and 93 and we were, of course we're going to go home for the holidays but because of the pandemic you know now we don't think we don't know if we are and and we just never want to lose sight of these people in our lives that, you know, who knows how long they'll be in our lives, but they're valuable to us. It's not doing a favor for them. Sure it is, but it's really, it's really satisfying to our soul. And, 
helping change us as people. So Sky Bergman, again, thank you for joining us on thank Growing Boulders, <laughs> What's Next. And the, the rest of you out there, man, we've got the best audience on social media. Thank you so much for being part of this today, for finding it, for sharing it, for going to Growing Boulder and becoming part of this community that like a snowball is starting to roll down the hill. It's all, a, you know, we don't tell you what to do, how to do it or anything like that. We just encourage you to live your life the best way you can. Lives well lived, like Sky said. Uh, be an ordinary person living an extraordinary life. Do the things you want to do. Follow your passions. Make every day of your life worthwhile. Live with intent, live with purpose, and make a difference in the lives of others. Thanks again for joining us on Growing Boulders. What's next? And we'll see you again very, very soon. Growing Boulder, what's next?